Hey everybody, it's Miss Davis. We're going to do Chapter 9, Section 5 together tonight, talking about the effects of changing the dimensions proportionally on our polygons. So the first thing you need to do is make sure you have all of your supplies, make sure you have your notebook and the two pieces of paper that you picked up in class today. You should have gotten a full sheet and another half sheet, so you can set those aside. All right, the first thing that I want you to do is to go ahead and write down your title and your I will statement. I will recognize the effects of changing dimensions of polygons proportionally. Okay, so make sure you have that written down. So if you need to pause me so you can get all caught up and ready to go, please do so. All right, as we move on, we need to talk about a few things. I want to go ahead and give you a few formulas so that you can kind of keep them in your mind that we'll be using and making sure we memorize. When we're talking about effects on perimeter, if your uh, answer is in units versus units squared or cubed, then you know you can take your original perimeter and multiply it by the scale factor. And we will talk about how this works and show you some examples in just a second. And then if you're talking about area where your units, whatever they may be, centimeters, feet, whatever, are squared, then that's your hint to know that you can square the scale factor they're telling you to use and multiply it by your original area, and that will give you um, your new area. And of course, as you can imagine, volume then, since it is cubed, I'll cube my square factor and multiply that times my original volume to get what the new one would be if, my, um, if my, all of my dimensions were cubed. Okay, or multiplied by whatever scale factor they give me. All right, so now what you need to do is you need to take this piece of paper that you picked up. This one, you should have gotten a full sheet. Okay, you have several questions one and two. If you'll just maybe fold it where this little parallelogram is on the front, that would be great. And then you also have this second little sheet, okay? So let's put that one aside, but pull out the full one, okay? And we're gonna work on this first question together. It's talking about the effects on the area of different polygons. All right, so let's read this one together. It says, what happens to the area of the parallelogram if the base is tripled? Well, in this, I always, if I can't remember what I'm supposed to do or what the rule is, I go ahead and come up with an original, make up any dimensions that you want, affect them the way they say, and then figure out what your new area or perimeter or whatever will be. So here I said 4 and 3. When I found my original area, it was 12 units squared. And when I tripled just the base, it made it 36 units squared. So see how I could have just multiplied my original area by 3, the scale factor, and gotten my new dimension, my new area. But notice that that doesn't really follow the rule because our rule said if the area had units squared, I multiplied the square, I squared the scale factor and multiplied that. This is the case only because we only multiplied or changed one dimension, okay? We'll see what happens when we change both. So if you only change one, then the area is going to be multiplied by just the square factor itself, not square factor sca uh, squared. Okay, and then of course if we change both of the dimensions, then you're going to follow the rule where if the units are squared like an area, you will square your scale factor and multiply that by the original area. Okay, now let's move to number two. If you're a little confused, hang with me, okay? And don't forget, you can always rewind me and go back and listen to it again. All right, this is what happens to the area of the figure in each case. The base of a triangle is multiplied by 4. Once again, hmm, I don't remember the rule, so let's make up something here. I just came up with 3 and 4. Found my first area, which is 6 units squared here. They said to multiply the base by 4, so I did that. I now have 16. Height is the same. Multiplied it out and found that it's 24. Once again, I only changed one of my dimensions, so I only multiply my original area by the actual scale factor itself. Now, I want to show you something that happens with circles. Notice there's not too much we can change in circles, correct? We have the radius or the diameter. So here it says the radius of a circle is multiplied by a half. Well, I went ahead and just made up a real simple circle with a radius of 2 so that when I multiplied it by a half, I only had 1. So my original area is 4 pi units squared. My new area was 1 pi units squared. Well, that's not multiplying it just by a half, but it's a circle, so it's special. So no matter what, it follows the rule. So it is area, 
So I need to square my scale factor and multiply it by the original area. So 4 pi times 1 fourth, which is a half squared, equals 1 pi units squared. Okay? All right, let's see. Let's move on to, let's do this one together. This one says, what happens to the area if both the base and the height of the parallelogram are tripled? Once again, I came up with an original. I just want to test my hypothesis, okay? We want to see if both of them are tripled. It should be that the original area was multiplied by 3 squared, correct? Well, let's see. Original area of this one is 8 units squared. Changed both my height and base. Found the new one. This is 72. 8 times 3 squared indeed is 72 units squared. So this one did follow the rule. You have two more questions below this one on this page that I'd like you to finish for homework tonight, okay? So hopefully that won't be too difficult. Finish those and bring those in tomorrow. All right, so now we're going to talk about perimeter and circumference, or circumference I should say, where we just have units. There's no square or cubed on the units themselves. This says describe the effect on the perimeter or circumference if the length and width of the rectangle are multiplied by four-thirds. Well, let's see. If we're changing both of them and it is just perimeter, I should be able to find my original perimeter and multiply it by just the scale factor itself. Well, I want to test that hypothesis. So I came up with some original dimensions. I changed them or multiplied them by the scale factor like it said. My original perimeter is 18, and my new one is 24 units. Well, let's test it. 18 times the scale factor indeed is 24, so it does follow the rule that you multiply the units, or whatever your original perimeter was, by the scale factor, and that gives you your new one. Okay, let's look down here real quickly. This one says, what happens if I change the base and the height of a triangle when the base is 1.5 and the height is 6 and they are both tripled? Well, let's test it. The original perimeter, so well, we need to find the hypotenuse first. So I do my Pythagorean theorem. I find that my hypotenuse, or the C, is 6.185. So I add them all up and I get a perimeter of 13.685 meters. Okay, well, let's go ahead and triple everything. So tripling the height and tripling the base. I still have to find my hypotenuse. So let's see, my new hypotenuse is 18.554 meters. Oh, look, that's exactly the original hypotenuse multiplied by 3, which makes sense, right? We multiplied everything by 3. And then, and I could have actually just taken the shortcut and multiplied that to get here since everything else was. But now we know add them all up, and our new perimeter is 41.054 meters. Well, testing it, that means that this should equal 13.685 times the scale factor, which was 3, and indeed it does follow that rule. Okay? Good. All right, let's see what else we have here. All right, so let me get situated. I'm on this back page. I'm on the third one at the bottom, the one that says number five, and it has a rhombus has an area of nine centimeters squared, and it wants to know if the area is multiplied by five, how does it affect the diags of the rhombus? Well, there's a few ways you could do this, but let's just get the overall gist. The area for a rhombus is area equals one-half diag times diag. Well, if the original one is nine, and if we multiply all this out, okay, so we see that the products of these two diagonals is 18. Okay, you know, getting rid of the one half. All right, so we have 18. Well, if we change that original area by, you know, multiplying it by 5, we get 45 equals this. All right, well, I'm going to do the same thing. Get rid of my half, and oh, looky there. I got rid of it, and then I didn't get rid of it. Isn't that good? Okay, get rid of that little guy. So now the products of the diagonals are 90. So is that 18 times 5 equals 90? I think it is. The product of the diags is 5 times larger, okay? So in here, if the area is multiplied by 5, then the product of the diags is multiplied by 5 as well, okay? So the rhombus, the area, so we kind of went backwards there a little bit, but this gives you an idea of how you could do that.
Okay, we'll talk a little bit more of the effects on different things as we go through. But the ma one of the main things we want you to know is how to know what's going to happen if we change one unit or two units if we're finding area versus perimeter and things like that. Okay, all right. So I'd like you to finish these last two on this page. And then your third page, you can actually go ahead and just glue that straight into your notebook and then maybe tape this little book that we just did over that. By the way, go ahead and omit this little guy, the one that says number seven. Yeah, he's kind of a booger of a problem. So just omit him. But I would like you to try this one and see what you come up with, okay? Tomorrow you will get your stamping class. As long as you have attempted all of these problems, with a good attempt and have some good questions for us and hopefully have some answers and we will be there to answer anything you have. If you have any tonight, please feel free to email me or Miss Scott and I hope you have a wonderful evening. Thank you. See you tomorrow.